everybody so we're out in the shop and today what we're gonna work on is getting the handle scales put together for this knife now we need to go ahead and get that process done because we need to wait for them to cure before we can actually mount them to the knife and when it comes to the process we need to get the handle scales put together and then while they're curing we'll get the knife cleaned up and everything so that it doesn't look like this anymore and then we'll go ahead and mount the handle scales to it. So on today's episode, it is going to be focusing on getting these squared up and mounted to this eighth inch thick burgundy-ish uh, liner. I think this is going to go real well with these set of handle scales right here. I just think that's going to look absolutely awesome on the knife itself. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get these squared up, mounted to this, and let them start curing so that we can go ahead and go to the next step with this, which is getting it cleaned up. And then we'll go from there. So that's what we're working on today. Let's jump into it. Let's get it knocked out. Okay, guys, actually, before we get this started, I want to explain something to y'all. So we've got the handle scales here. And the reason why we're going through the whole like squaring process is because we have one edge here that is the thinnest edge out of all of them. Then it goes to thicker here. These are a completely different size. Now, of course, I did not request for them to be squared whenever he sent them to me, so it's not a big deal. I can do that here, and I can square them exactly how I want them with the thicknesses that I want them, so I'm perfectly fine with them being the way that they are. Now, this edge here, if we were to just leave the handle scales that thick and attach them to the knife, it'd be a pretty thin handle. That is the reason why I am adding it to this eighth inch thick liner now i don't want to go much thicker than this because once we get this put together it's going to be well over a quarter of an inch same thing with whenever i do the other side and then whenever you add that to the quarter inch thick steel even if it's just a quarter of an inch here a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch on the end it's going to end up being three quarters of an inch wide which is perfect width for me now if it's a hair over that cool but I don't want it to be any thinner than that because then the handle gets to where it feels weird. I also don't want it to be much thicker than that because, again, you end up with this real bulky handle that feels like it should be on an axe, and I don't really want that. I want it to be just right when it comes to the ergonomics, so I don't want it to be too thick or too thin, and I think that this is going to end perfectly fine. But I've got to be careful whenever I'm removing the material so that we don't make this edge any thinner. So just got to focus on that stuff, check it very often and make sure you're doing what makes sense for the end result. Maybe not what makes sense for what you're just looking at, but what it's going to look like on the knife and how it's going to feel. So that's what we're going to work on. Now let's go ahead and jump into it. So for this belt, we're definitely going to go ahead and go with a 60 grit on it so that we can hog off material pretty quick. But the big key to that is if you go a finer grit than this, whenever it comes time to actually mount these to the kydex, you're gonna have to rough it up at that point because you wanna create a bunch of little sanding lines in here so the glue has as much stuff to, to stick to as possible. You know, if we took this up to 400 grit, the glue just wouldn't bond to anything. So we wanna make sure that we have a nice rough belt to, for one, take off as much material as quick as possible but also to keep it nice and rough so that our glue has the best mechanical bond possible so 60 grit belt is what we're going to be using now a little word of advice make sure you're being careful whenever you're doing something like this because we are using a 60 grit belt and if you slip right here it will take the skin off your hand in a heartbeat so just be careful if you're going to do something like this and take your time and make sure you're not being careless because the last thing you need to do is take a whole bunch of skin again off of your hand. <laughs> now what I'm doing here is I'm just applying pressure to the side that I want to remove the most material from and by that I mean we have the thinner side on one edge of the scales. So I'm focusing on the other edge so that I can even it out across the actual width of the scales. 
you do this so that you're not removing too much material and making the thinner edge even thinner. Now, one of the things that you want to make sure you do on this is try and focus on the two pieces where they're not meeting. So these were already cut to be pretty even and the grain to flow through it. If you start removing material from the sides that touch each other from the get-go, you could mess up the grain crossing over the spine and the belly of the handle. So just, you know, be careful whenever you're doing things like that and pay attention to what sides you're grinding on so that you're not messing up that grain pattern. Now we're gonna clamp them together just so that we can get them nice and squared up. You don't need to focus on this too much. This is just a thing that I like to do. It's not really that necessary because we're gonna end up attaching these to G10 and then we're gonna end up squaring them up again later. So this is just a little bit of prep work to kind of make the next steps easier when it comes to squaring them up after they're mounted to the G10. And I'll tell you, these handle scales are absolutely gorgeous. These are gonna turn out so nice whenever we get them mounted to the knife. So all we're gonna do here is put them on the G10 and kind of get a rough idea of how much G10 we're gonna end up using. Whenever I go and I mark this, I make sure that we have excess on the left and right of the scales just so that whenever it comes time to glue up if they shift a little bit they're still on top of g10 you know some people want to cut them to where they're the exact size and if you do that it doesn't leave you any room for error and you want to leave a little bit of that so that you can easily adjust and shift and make sure you're on top of the g10 So now that we got those cut, it's time to go ahead and get them sanded. At first, I was just moving them across this piece of sandpaper, and then I thought, I can't even see if this is working. So I switched it over and started hand sanding the back side of them. And we're doing this again to create more surface area with those scratches for a better mechanical bond. So we're just going through here, and this is with 220 grit sandpaper that's all I felt like I needed to use for this and then once we get done hand sanding them we're gonna go ahead and clean them off and go on to the next step which of course is the glue up and I'm just using JB weld five minute epoxy for this y'all have seen me do this plenty of times uh, on this one I decided okay I'm just gonna make sure to not overdo it with the glue because I tend to I used on this one luckily just enough glue to be able to do this glue up. We get it mixed real well and then <laughs> I did all of this and I completely forgot about the clamps so I had to go get all the clamps to be able to clamp everything together. Now I will tell you every single time I do this I always say the same thing. All you need is enough glue to make this stick. You do not need to do a ton on here because if you do, it's gonna squeeze out, get all over the place and make a huge mess. You really just need enough to create the bond and that's it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just putting some thin layers of the glue on here and then we're gonna go ahead and get it clamped down as even as possible. And I am not really cranking these clamps down. I'm just putting enough pressure to make the bond happen a little bit of squeeze out happen and that's it. If you go too hard, you'll squeeze all the glue out and you won't get a very good bond. So just be careful when you're doing that.
those last few clamps are kind of not necessary, but oh well. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's vlog. Now, we've got our scales right there, already clamped up and getting ready to cure and do all that stuff overnight. Now, the next step that we're going to be doing in this series is getting this cleaned up, getting the maker's mark put on it, and then figure out how we're going to etch it, whether we're going to etch it and stone wash it, or if we're going to mustard etch it, or do something like that. I haven't exactly decided, but I know it's going to be absolutely awesome whichever way we go, because this knife looks awesome. Those scales are going to look awesome. I think that they're absolutely beautiful, and I like the way we got them paired together with that maroon. And again, I just want to thank Corey Scott for actually sending the scales and sending the steel for this build. This build wouldn't be possible without him. So guys, y'all thanks Corey Scott for this, and there you go. Now, I do want to mention something. So, I'm trying to figure out how I want to schedule a few of the builds that I have coming up because I've got a lot of knives that I want to start on, and I don't want to start muddying up my schedule, but I've just got builds that I've wanted to do for a little while, and I don't know which ones I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to film them all. I'm not going to film them all. I feel like I'm doing y'all an injustice if I don't film them, but we've got this EDC that I want to do. So just a simple little EDC that's going to go on this piece of 5160 that we forged flat and then did the hammer texture on. I just think that, you know, I, I had drawn this out a while back, like three months ago, and I finally was just messing around and I put it on this piece of steel and it fit perfectly. And I thought, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm trying to figure out when I want to start this build because I absolutely want to start that one. I love that knife shape and I think that's going to look awesome. So we've got that one. We've got the one that we're going to be doing on the bigger piece of this still that has the ball peen texture to it. There you go. You can see that. I've got this knife that I want to do. Something a little different. And I just think that that's going to be a really cool looking chopper. And I want to do that one. But again, it's just trying to figure out the time to do these knives. And plus, we're going to be doing the forged kukri. So if I wasn't filming everything, I could just knock out knives all the time. But the amount of time that it takes to edit videos is about half of these. Like the, the process of these videos. And... If you take the time that it took me to do the filming, do that sometimes times two when it comes to the editing room process. So if I spend three, four hours in the shop getting all that footage, it might take me four or five hours just to edit the video. So <laughs> there's a lot of time that that takes up. So if I was just doing knives and I wasn't doing videos, I can knock out tons of knives. But remember, I'm a YouTuber that just happens to make knives. So everything's got to be filmed and everything's got to be edited so that we can have the videos so that y'all can watch them and I enjoy that part you know I'll be able to figure out when these knives are gonna start getting made but again I think it's an injustice if I don't film them so that you can actually watch them so there you go guys that's the end of this one if y'all would give this video a thumbs up share this video or one of my other videos and guys if you have not yet you should take your knife well, maybe not take your knife, but you should take something and poke the subscribe button right there so you get notified of the stuff that we have that's coming up because I've got a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. I really appreciate that. I want y'all to have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.